Hello. Welcome to Aslan Speaks, episode 17. How to awaken, or how to spiritually awaken. I was inspired to share this video with you. Today, I will be talking about awakening. Or another term for it is reaching enlightenment. I spent years researching metaphysics and spiritual knowledge. I myself, I myself is on the path of awakening. On my quest to find knowledge and wisdom, I had a hard time finding out one source that could fulfill my thirst for knowledge or for my, for my thirst to fulfill my spiritual knowledge or metaphysic knowledge. I spent years of research, guys. Yes, I spent years traveling down different rabbit holes, different people, books, documentaries, absorbing a whole bunch of information. And all the pieces of knowledge that I found was scattered all over the place. It was rare for me to, it was rare for me to find what I was seeking. So today, my goal is to put all the knowledge I acquired for awakening in one place so you guys can have one source instead of being like me who had to search all over the place to find different meanings to life or spiritual knowledge all over the place. But I'm going to try to take all that knowledge that I acquired and piece it all together in this video and just do my best. I'm not perfect. In order to help a person awaken or to start to walk the path of enlightenment, First, I want to share you this crucial bit of information. Awakening may not happen overnight. It's not an overnight process. There's some that say they awakened overnight. Well, some there are some rare cases out there. But from the most part, from all my research, it takes years. Yes, years of practice and to work on self-mastery to fully awaken or attain enlightenment. If your soul yearns to awaken, I should tell you that awakening sometimes is a difficult road. Yes, guys. I've been on this path for years, and sometimes it was really tough. Sometimes I wanted to give up and go back, plug myself back into the matrix, and just get lost in the materialism and my old life. But if you have faith, and if you listen to your soul, and once you awaken, it's really hard to go back to the way you were. Because once you awaken, you start to see things and, ma and do amazing things. So there are some examples of enlightened people in our world. And here's one of them. His name, most of you guys know, is Buddha. He became an enlightened one. He gave up all his worldly possessions. Can you give up all your worldly possessions? He gave up being a prince, meaning he was a prince and one day he would have been a king. Could you give up that kind of uh, lifestyle, being a prince to have wealth and money? Well, that's what Buddha did. He gave up his all his worldly possessions and he spent years traveling and dedicating his life to reach enlightenment. So that just shows you if you really want to awaken or to reach enlightenment, the dedication that you may may have to give to to obtaining that. Another example, one of my favorite teachers ever, is Jesus or Yeshua. He's another enlightened enlightened one. In the Bible, he says they say he's the son of God. Well, nobody really knows about the early years of Jesus. You know, there's a big gap, and then he returns when he's thirty something. Well, from all my research, I discovered that he spent most of his early years studying higher spiritual truths or learning hidden sacred knowledge. And, you know, he, I don't think Jesus, maybe he was born the son of God, but he learned and worked on himself to become that, to become an enlightened one. And he too sacrificed a lot to walk the enlightenment path. We all know how his story ended up. He ended how his story ended up. He, he ended up being crucified. So if you want to awaken, or if you want to walk the path of enlightenment, then know that there will be times 
Yes, there will be times when you may fail. But the key is, if you fail, accept that. Maybe take a break, collect yourself, and try again. Know that you can't just meditate one time and become an enlightened one. Or be, reach enlightenment. The journey of awakening and enlightenment takes daily practice and daily determination. So what, what is awakening? So let's get to the me main message of this. What is awakening? Awakening, in my opinion, is when a person awakens his or her consciousness to higher and higher states. Consciousness can be also, another term for it is awareness. When a person uh, raises their awareness to higher and higher states, to the point where they achieve enlightenment, and become with every and become one with everything. In some cultures, this is called nirvana. You know, Buddha reached nirvana when he meditated for like I think it was like seven days. I could be wrong, but he meditated, on, put his back to a tree and meditated for days, and then he reached the state where he became one with everything, and he saw all his past lives, and he saw how the world really worked. So that's the goal: is to fig, find find that within ourselves. To reach the enlightenment within ourselves. Some people are have, have are, are already awakened somewhat. If you're watching this video, this means you're probably already on the path to awakening. That's right, guys. Certain knowledge and wisdom doesn't come to you until you're consciously ready for that. So if you're watching this video and you're actually didn't just click on it and you're actually watching it through, through the entirety, it probably means that your soul or consciousness is, has you watching this for a reason. When the student is ready, the master will show up. Let me repeat that. When the student is ready, the master will show, show himself or show up. And when the student becomes the master is when the master disappears. So what are some signs of awakening? Yes. So what are some signs of awakening? Number one, you feel disconnected or detached. Like you don't fit in with the rest of the world or society. That you're a loner, that you see this world and you, you see through it and you're like, man, this doesn't resonate with me. Number two, you, you reevaluate your beliefs. Meaning that your beliefs you grew up with don't completely serve you anymore. That you see holes through those programs that's within you. So you start to reevaluate and replace them. Number three, your dreams are more vivid, meaning maybe in the past you didn't dream at all, but now that you're awakening, you're starting, you're starting to dream daily and you're starting to actually remember them. Step four, you experience synchronicities or deja vu, and you start seeing that there's nothing that is by accident. There's no such thing as coincidences. And that the universe brings to you certain people, certain places at the right time. It's called I call it divine timing or synchronicity. Number five, your relationships begin to shift, meaning you start to fall out of out of love or resonance with certain people, certain family members, and then you start falling into resonance or surrounding yourself with certain people. So when you, as you grow or become awakened, you realize that certain people in your life are, don't serve your highest good or hold you back in life. And so you start replacing those people out of your life and, and bringing in people that do serve your highest good. Number six, spirituality or spiritual knowledge becomes one of your most important things you do in your life or seek in your life. That you start to be spiritual daily. Number seven, you become more intuitive, meaning you start listening to that gut intuition or that gut feeling within you more and more often. Number eight, you can sense when people are not being their authentic self, when people are being on, on, I can't say that word, so I'm just changing it. You can see when people are putting up a facade, when people are not truly being who they truly are. You can see that you can see that person and they're wearing a mask and you can see that they're not being authentic, that they're faking it, 
faking it in some way or that they're trying to manipulate you. You see the world and you start seeing how people manipula manipulate others or you see how certain organizations manipulate others. So you're starting to see through the illusion. Uh, the number nine, you know that everyone in life is on their own journey. Yes. When you start to awaken, you start realizing, hey, every person's on their own journey, even if they're awakened or not awakened. Number 10, you want to help others. You know, that was one of my biggest things when awakening is that I wanted to start helping others. And how I help others is sharing wisdom and knowledge. Another, another, another one is number 11. This one I suffered uh, a lot by. And number 11 is loneliness or the feeling of always being alone. This journey for awakening is not for everybody. You know, some people may choose to stay plugged into the matrix and stay uh, being filled with materialism, video games, Netflix, or just, you know, party, partying and drinking. And if you're awakening, usually you feel alone because there's not that many people that could truly resonate with you or feel how you feel. You know, I've, I'm often feel alone. I'm often a hermit because when I go out there in the world, a lot of people don't understand me or get me. You know, some people are not ready for this, the insights and truths that I have to share. But I trust my intuition and I trust the Holy Spirit within me to share the knowledge and wisdom with the right people at the right time. And just have faith that he, the Lord or God brings people into my life at the right time. Then I won't not, I will not be so lonely sometimes. Number 12, you feel more connected to nature. Yes, you have a calling, you know, maybe you were always in your cubicle at work or you're always in your house, but on your path of awakening, you want to go out and hug a tree. You want to go, go out and see animals. Uh, no, no, number 13, your senses are heightened, meaning you're more in tune with the universe, that you have this in tune, you're, that you're in tune, meaning your intuition or your senses are all firing and you're just picking up on stuff from the universe, people, places, things, and you just know things, you know, your, your senses are heightened. Number 14, the view of the world starts to change, you know, so when I was a kid, all the way up to my early 20s, I only, I saw the view, the world, how I was programmed to see the world through the news media and stuff and through all the textbooks in the school. And when I started awakening, I started to view the whole meaning of history and things that I learned differently. And basically, I started to see the world uh, view of the world. My view of the world changed dr dr drastically. Number 15, there's a sudden change in your habits and routines. So for that means like when you awaken, you start seeing things that in yourself that you maybe a routine that you do or a habit that you do that you do, you know that no longer serves your highest good for me i was a pothead i used to smoke a lot of pot and now i don't because i don't need that no more i realized it was a crutch that was holding me back and when i became to when i started to awaken i realized that that negative habit was not good for me but each their own i try not to judge 16, you feel empathy for others. You feel others' energy or you feel their suffering. Guys, I'm highly empathic. So when I walk into a room, I can sense the energy in a room. When I have a conversation with a person, I intuitively or empathically know their energy. And I get, and then sometimes uh, I know when they're sad or even when they have a smile on their face, I know something's off. Or I know when someone's being shady or dishonest with me because I can just sense their energy. You know, I guess that's that lower st vibrational energy when, when they're in a place of negativity and they're trying to hoodwink me. But then I can also sense when people are coming out of a place of love and gratitude. So you're, you're, you become more empathic. 17, you have an overwhelming urge to seek out spiritual knowledge. You become curious about subjects and information that in the past you wouldn't even care for or you would ignore it. You, you know, certain subjects and information came up to you in the past and you just ignored it. But now you have that overwhelming curiosity or urge to seek out that wisdom and knowledge. 
And that's what happened to me. And I started seeking out knowledge and information almost daily, guys. And you got to use your discernment, of course, because over the years I've had information that led me astray. But I've also had information that changed my life overnight. So if any of these signs resonate with you, that means that you're probably on a path of awakening. For some, some people, though, this, like I said before, awakening doesn't happen overnight. And for some, it takes, or so, so it, awakening doesn't happen overnight. But there are some cases where it does happen overnight for some people. But for most, it takes trials and tribulations to trigger them to awaken. You know, for me, that was me. I went through a lot of ups and downs in my life. And these trials and tribulations are life lessons that, that happened to me in my life triggered me on this path. So even though a person may have been or may be awakened, their their, their journey to enlightenment can be a long one. You guys, it, it could be long. You know, so many people want that quick fix. They want to reach a nirvana, meditate one time and reach a nirvana. It, it, let's be realistic. To awakening, it takes practice and dedication. You got to think of it like this, uh, like enlightenment is like a superpower. Like you, when you reach enlightenment, it's like you are having a magical power. You wouldn't give a magical power that could cause chaos and destruction to somebody that was negative mindset, mindset, who had a negative state of mind that would use those powers for ill gain or for ill purposes or for negative purposes. So that's why... To reach enlightenment, you have to remove the ego mind, all the negativity, all the darkness within you. You got to get rid of it all before you can attain that completely. You know, like, so like, I like to use like path of alignment. One of the things you got to learn, one of the crucial things, learn to differentiate, uh, tell who, what's speaking to you. Is your ego mind speaking through your, through your head or your heart speaking through you? Your ego is the lust greed, anger, you know, when you get angry, is it really your higher self that is speaking or is it that ego mind reacting out of anger and then you tend to do something stupid or hurtful or lash out with others? So you got to learn to master the mind and get rid of the ego. Reaching the state of enlightenment is like having a superpower. Yep. So that's what I want to point out. So it's awesome when you, you guys, um, when you have that superpower, you when you reach awakening or enlightenment, you start to awaken the dormant psychic abilities within you. For me, it was my empathic abilities to sense energy and heightened and my intuitive intuitive knowing or my instinctive knowing got really heightened. And now I'm almost like on autopilot and then my instinctive knowing or intuition guides me all the time. So here are the stages of awakening. Stage one. I call stage one the spiritual awakening, or or some people just call it awakening. This is the beginning of your journey to spiritual awakening. A person starts to see through the illusion of their reality, or they start to see the matrix, or see through that everything around you is an illusion for the most part. Uh, everything is made up of energy, and depending on how you react, you could manipulate that energy. They start to question everything around them. You know, they see that some of the beliefs and pre-programs that they were taught in their life or growing up no longer resonates with their being. A person starts to begin doing inner soul work. This is crucial. A person's stage one is you start doing inner soul work. Meaning you start removing that garbage within you, the stuff that doesn't serve you, you know, the stuff that's holding you down a lower vibrational frequency. You do this by the soul work by clearing out certain habits, certain relationships, and certain belief systems. You know, and they start, you start removing, basically, you start removing all the negativity within you. Outside, you know, you start removing all that negativity within you negative trauma, negative emotion, negative feelings, negative thoughts. And you start embracing the positivity. You start uh, filling your body with, or emotions and feelings with positive feelings, positive emotion, positive thoughts. Stage two. This one, 
some of you have already probably went through it. I went through it and it wasn't very fun. Stage two, two is the dark night of the soul. And maybe in the future, I might just dedicate a video just on this aspect. But a dark night of the soul is when a person may go through a rough patch in their life. A person may reach the lowest of the lows. You may hit rock bottom in your life. This happens so that you can see what no longer serves you. Basically, like when you hit, go through the dark, dark night of the soul, all this darkness and all this negativity ar arises up within you, all this hurt, trauma, negative emotion, negative feelings. That's the reason it's rising, because before you weren't awake. You weren't conscious, or you weren't your consciousness wasn't high enough to see those aspects of yourself. And now you're going through the dark night of the soul because you have raised and did that you have done the inner healing or inner soul work enough to start truly seeing yourself. The truly you raised your consciousness and your awareness so you could start to truly see you. And and now you start seeing all that negative programming negative beliefs and you hit rock bottom but once you see this it ha this happens to you when you hit rock bottom so that you can move past all the hurt and negative trauma and belief systems and relationships in your life so that you can give birth to a new self you know basically you're you're you know when you see all that aspects and you hit rock bottom in your life or go through that dark night of the soul you will merge reborn re, you know uh re, like the rebirth of your consciousness you're you're becoming awakened even to a higher state stage three you guys ready for this one one of my favorite ones becoming the master of your life meaning self-mastery at this stage you become the master of your life ding 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 this is where you start to diving deeper and deeper within yourself and outside yourself for the answers and wisdom you seek. You start putting into practice the spiritual knowledge or wisdom that you, you have gathered or have learned. You realize that most of your life you were on autopilot. Yes, you realize that most of your life you're on autopilot. And you didn't really have full control over your life. But when you become the master of your life, you gain full control over your life. So the path of awakening or enlightenment begins with self-mastery, guys. Self-mastery is crucial. It's like disciplining yourself to do certain spiritual practices to help you awaken. Help you control your life and not be on the autopilot and just reacting to outside factors but instead you are you are now creating the outside factors it's pretty cool stuff once you learn and dive deeper into it this is just a brief understanding of everything so first and foremost a person must realize that he or she is divine i love that guys a person must realize that he or she is divine Meaning you're not separate from God. That God is all around you and within you. Guys, there is a reason that most religions and teach like that most religions teach that God is separate from you. Why is that? Because they teach that he's separate from you, so that you have to go to the this particular building and see the special expert that has a better connection with God, and you have to give your power away to them. It's all about control. If you real, you know, so once you realize that God is not separate from you, you realize you'll, and that God, when you realize that God's within you, you break free from the invisible chains that control and manipulate you. When you awaken, you start seeing through the illusion of this reality, and you'll start to see that certain things are designed to strike, put fear into you, or make you fear based thinking, or but you start seeing that there are they that certain beings or people in power have tricked us to being free and that yeah we may think that we're free but we're not completely fully free why is that do you you know like if you go nowadays you have to go uh get a license just to go fishing a hundred years ago 
or for thousands of years, man and woman was able to go fishing for free. And you'll start to see the controls and the, the visible shackles that are on you. But once you re realize the divine, that you're divine and that God's within you, you start to break free from the visible chains that control you or manipulate you. You break free from the chains that keep you in a lower state of consciousness. That is the, the people in power that some of the, there's some people that know this knowledge and they use it to control and manipulate. And their biggest fear is the awakening of the individual to awaken to this, your soul truth, to know that you are divine. And once more people awaken, that's, that's why there's so many things in this world that keep us in a lower vibrational frequency or to keep us in a lower state of consciousness. That's why they want us to be sitting on the couch like a zombie and binge watch TV shows for 10 hours straight instead of going outside and meditating. That's why they poison our foods to keep us in a lower vibr vibrational state. There's so much, you guys, and I could go on a, a different topic on itself. But you break free from the visible chains that hold you back in life, guys. That's why I want to share this message of awakening to you guys. And then maybe I help you awaken, and then you can help others awaken. That's the greatest gift you could give to humanity. So if you want to awaken, here are some steps I suggest you do. Yes, these are some steps that I've come up and I've used in my life. And they might be out, out of order, so to speak. You know, but these are these steps really helped me a lot in awakening. Step one, meditation daily. You guys, it's crucial. And I talk to people all the time where they want, they want to awaken their chakras. They want to awaken their third eye. They want to unlock their psychic abilities. And I tell them to meditate. And they all say, I can't do that. Oh, I, I, I can't stay focused. Well, if you can't meditate, then then good luck on your path of awakening. You might have to find, well, prayer is another way of meditating. But guys, or, or men and women, meditation is crucial. When the, re the reason I started to awaken more and more is because I started meditate, meditating daily. When I would meditate for one week or let a, let a month pass, I was just a, on a slow journey. But what really ex excelled my path to awakening is to meditate daily. And you may experience something in your meditation, and you may not. But keep keep going, keep going. And eventually, you may experience something mind blowing or mind altering. So, let's see. Uh, meditation is when a person looks within themselves. It's inner reflection. You will not go far on the journey of awakening if you don't meditate. Meditation helps a person awaken. To deeper and deeper states of consciousness or deeper and deeper states of knowing. Step two, learn breath work. So breath work goes hand in hand with meditation. And for years I used to just meditate and didn't really focus on the breath that well. But when I learned breath work, it really heightened my meditation. And so most people don't know how to properly breathe. That when we breathe, we're basically on autopilot. But if you consciously breathe, you can also... That, that conscious breath and how you, those different, there's different techniques. You can also reach different states of consciousness. So breath work guys, learn that. Step three, begin to raise your consciousness or awareness to higher and higher states. So by doing how to raise your consciousness and awareness is just doing these daily practices and having faith in yourself that you're sl slowly or fast or quickly uh, working on your awareness or your consciousness. Step four, start removing all your beliefs and pre-programs or things that you were taught when you were young by your parents or from people you looked up to or even TV shows that don't serve your highest good. You know, that was one of my biggest things is there was so much garbage that we were taught that is so misleading and it actually holds you back and you know, keeps you in a lower state of consciousness. I was taught when I was a kid to be a tough guy, to always not to not be intimidated intimidated by others, but always to fight, and that was one of the one. Of, well, that's just one example of one of the programs that I was taught, you know. And I had to learn to get rid of that aspect of myself because it wasn't serving my highest good. Also, like many people have addictions, or do things, or think things that are not of the light. 
we all know that your intuition tells you, hey, dude, that that you smoking that cigarette or you drinking like six days out of the week is bad for you. You intuitively know. You know, so the thoughts you think, you know, the feelings you think, you know, your intuition or your higher self, whatever you want to call it, like yells at you. And you just, you can choose to brush it off or choose to listen to it. But there's many things that we all have taught from our beliefs or our programs that have not, or is not of the light, not of positivity. And one must choose the light within themselves and remove all the darkness. It's crucial, guys. You know, you start removing that, that stuff that inside you or around you that does not serve your highest good. Step five. This is the most important rule of them all. You ready for it? Master your mind. Let me repeat that. Master your mind. Meaning, master your thoughts, emotions, and feelings. One must remove all negative emotions, thoughts, and feelings from, from their mind or their beingness. A person who's awakened or on the awakened path know, knows this rule. He, he or she knows that our thoughts and feelings create our reality. So, that, so, they, so because they're awakened or they're on the path of self-mastery, they choose to filter their thoughts and emotions every moment of the day. Guys, this is what I do all the time. And sometimes I lose this battle, but most of the time, anything that enters any feeling or thought that enters my mind, I filter it. And then I let my higher self choose, is that good for me or is that bad for me? And if it's negative, negative feeling, negative thoughts, I kick, I kick it out of my mind. I choose to reject it out of my mind or reject it out of my beingness. I choose not to accept that thought. I used to suffer from severe depression and sadness and anxiety. And when I started the path of self-mastery, I started realizing that I could choose my, my state of thinking. I could choose to dwell on that sadness within me that made me feel depressed. Or I could choose, hey, I don't choose to give into that sadness within me anymore. I choose to remove that out of me. I choose not to allow myself to get depressed. I choose not to allow myself to feel anxiety. And I choose to be in a state of my higher self. So that's one of the cru crucial guys. You can map, and then also when you master your mind, you could choose how to react to certain situations in your life. When you're awakened, you take the bird's eye view of a situation, and instead of acting out of your lower nature, you'll be in your higher nature, and you could choose to react to a situation. Like if your situation came up in your life years before, you might have reacted out of anger, but now because you're awakened and enlightened, you can look at that situation and be like, "Nope, I'm not going to give into my anger. I'm, I'm going to choose love and react out of love." Even if it's a negative situation. Step six. Begin to heal yourself. F begin to heal physically, mentally, and emotional trauma within you. A lot of people hold on to negative emotions or trauma within themselves. You have to look at the darkest part of yourself and begin to heal those parts of you. So shine a light within you, guys. I have a video, like a brief introduction about... You have to shine a light. You have to look within and see like, hey, what aspects of myself is dark or hurtful or negative? And I have to remove that. Step seven. Forgiveness. Learn to forgive yourself of your past mistakes. We, we've all made mistakes, my friends. But learn to forgive yourself. And learn to forgive others. You know, you may not, you don't have to forget what someone did to you or the hurt that they cause you, but you can't forgive them. Because if you don't learn forgiveness, there's like an invisible chain of energy that if you hold on to the resentment or anger towards them, you're, you're still connected together. Like, and, and then you're still sending that person negative hurt. Like if you think every time you think of that person, you, you, you like, you, you think of negative thoughts towards them. You're sending that invisible and ener hurtful energy towards back towards them. Learn forgiveness. They may have hurt you. They might have caused deep emotional wounds in you. And, but you got to learn to heal. Heal yourself. And healing yourself is by learning to forgive. Let go of that 
Enlightenment is me enlightenment means to become lighter. So when you hold on to resentment or anger towards a person, you're holding on like concrete blocks that are just sinking you deeper and deeper into the lake, so to speak. And if you want to become enlightened or become lighter, you have to remove all that negativity or darkness within you and embrace the light within you and you'll start to raise higher and higher. Step eight, realize when someone is trying to trigger you. Yes, guys, there is there are people and places trigger you, especially if you're walking the path of enlightenment. Some people are not in control of their, their being and they, there might be negative entities and outside forces that see your light and they may say or do something that triggers you and they want to trigger you because they want to trigger you to go into your lo lower nature, to trigger you to react in anger or to lash out with your words or, or do something that's not of your higher self. You have to learn, hey, when you become awakened, learn when the people or places trigger you and then not to react, to stay neutral. You must stay in your power. You know, when someone triggers you and you start lashing out with your tongue or, you know, do something that's not of your highest nature, you are giving your power away. Step nine, another one of my favorite uh, topics, and I try to do this daily myself, is step nine is become the neutral observer of your life. That, like, there's the law called the law of duality. It's a universal law. And there's, so that would be man and woman, light and dark, good and evil. But when you become the neutral observer, you don't sway either way. You stay centered in yourself and anchored, anchored in your higher self. And you don't give into that, to, into that. So like, so becoming the neutral observer is like means staying grounded and staying in your high state of consciousness or awareness. Choose to be the neutral observer of your life. Instead of gossiping or speaking badly about others, choose not to speak. You guys, you, you, most of us have been in this experiment where you're hanging with friends and they're gossiping, saying negative things about people, or you know, and you get pulled in, and then you see you see yourself start uh, share, share, sh gossiping with others, and a neutral observer will realize that hey, they're talking negatively about a person, and that's not of the light. That's not being a uh, awakened being so i choose not to give my power away into that uh choose not to get tangled with other negative behaviors like so being a neutral observer you could you could realize the negative behaviors and you choose to stay out of it but if you're in your lower nature you get tangled up in negative behaviors negative thoughts or negative actions stay neutral step 10 Know that you're a vibrational being. That everything around you is energy or source energy that's vibrating in different frequency. Pay attention to who you give your energy to. Some things raise your energy and some things drain your energy. So be mindful of your energy. Step 11. Begin to view the world as that. that okay, so begin to view the world that everything is connected. That basically you, the universe is inside you and you everything within you, you project out that other people are another form of aspect of you, so to speak. That everybody is one. Everything is one. And scientists have proven this through the, the source energy or consciousness field. That everything around us is energy and it's all one, but just vibrating in different frequency. Step 12, step 12, get rid of all the judgment and attachments that don't serve your highest good. You know, this was one of the hardest ones for me to learn because I was so judgmental, guys. You know, and I was due to a lot of my Christian, Christian, Christian beliefs and pre-programs that I grew up with. You know, when you reach a state of awakening and you realize that everyone's one and that everything, everyone's part of you. You don't judge no more because if you judge them, you're really judging yourself. If you cast negative, uh, if you say negative words about them, you really say negative words about yourself. 
If you cause, cause harm onto others, you're actually causing harm to yourself. And that's why it's so important to get rid of all judgment and attachments. So and that, that's another key to awakening is learning not to speak ill of others. Even if they're, you know, there's tons of people that are like that I don't resonate with and they, they attack me, they attack my channel, they attack, attack my Instagram channel and they, they're, they're always a neg negatively oriented saying negative things about me. But I choose not to, you know, I choose not to give into that uh, hate or that negativity. And I choose to, hey, I'm not going to speak ill of you because in the end you are me. Step 13, begin to eat healthy. We're vibrational beings, guys. We're energy. So one of the things that I like to share was eat energy foods. So plants and fruits are highly vibrational food, uh, energy foods. When you eat dead foods like that cheeseburger or that processed stuff, there's no energy really in it. It's all negative garbage that you're putting in your body. And I struggle with this. I love my cheeseburgers. I love my fast food. But try to put nutritional stuff within you. When you eat, when you add nutrition to your body, you're adding the light in your body in, in another way. So through meditation and through food, you can raise your consciousness. Your body is your temple. Think of your body as a car. If you feed it bad gas, aka bad thoughts, feelings, or food, it'll run rough. It may not get you to your destination. It may break down. But if you feed it good gas, aka good thoughts, feelings, and food, it'll run smoothly and last a long time. You see people like I've seen people who are who live in their they're like in their twenties and they look like they're forty because they chose not to be judgmental, but use them as an example that they did a lot of drugs, they drank a lot, they ate a lot of bad food, and that tears your body down. For me, when people see me, they I, I look young. I'm in my 30s, but some people say I look like in my 20s because I choose to take care of my mind, body, and spirit. And I try to eat healthy. I try to think healthy. I try to do positive, loving things. And I try to take care of my body, my temple. Step 14, learn to place yourself in the right environment and also learn to surround yourself with the right people. It's very crucial. My life changed overnight when I started hanging out with inspiring, uplifting people and I stopped choosing the people that encouraged me to do drugs or drink, you know, and every now and then I go out and drink, you know, I have a few cocktails or a few beers, but I don't make it a daily routine. And when I was younger, I used to do that a lot. So I chose to place myself in a more positive atmosphere, chose a better environment, chose better people. Step 15, go within for the answers. Meaning learn to listen to your intuition every second of the day. And if you're interested about developing your intuition or learning more about intuition, I have an in-depth video on this channel. Um, when I, when I was younger, I was always searching all this knowledge outside of myself, looking for this article, reading that book. But as I become to awaken more and more, I started realizing that the knowledge is already within me. And some, like, even as I speak to you now, some of this knowledge is just coming from, through my intuitive knowing or my instinctive knowing. Step 16, choose to make conscious decisions. Meaning, make good decisions in your life. You should, so every decision you should filter in your mind. You know, ask yourself, what state of being are you making this decision from? Are you making this decision from like the Holy Spirit within you or from your higher self? Or are you making this decision in a lower nature or, in, or, in, or you're making a decision based because you're in a negative state of mind? Don't give into your lower nature. Always make good, conscious, higher self-based decisions. Number 17, or step 17. You attract to you what you think and feel. Yes, guys. Thoughts create your reality. You attract to you what you think and feel. So choose to always make positive choices. Choose positivity and remove all the negativity or the negative thoughts and feelings in your life, guys. And this is one of my biggest steps for me to help 
that helped me ascend is that I started filtering out the negative people, negative thoughts, negative feelings out of my, my being. And I only choose positive thoughts, people and feelings. And yes, I fail. I'm a human just like you. But my life is so much amazing because I started to live by the law of attraction of positive attracts positive and negative attracts negative. And I choose never to go down the negative path. Every time I have a negative thought in my mind, I choose to remove it and I don't give it power. Step 18, fill your body with light. Meaning learn to awaken and activate your chakra centers within you. You guys, you have this, this dormant energy in your body. It's called the Kundalini. And we're through, you know, and through proper, uh, like, meditation, proper health, seeking out spiritual knowledge, and through breath work and meditation, you can awaken this energy within you. And basically, it's like awakening a, a, a powerful source of energy or light within you. And so learn how to awaken your chakras, and you can do that through meditation. And learn to connect with source energy and let your body fill your and let that source energy fill your body. So when you meditate and when you align your chakras and you balance your chakras, you can learn or teach yourself to connect to source energy. That's what fills your body. You know, when you're breathing that air, that invisible air that you breathe, you know what that is, really? It's source energy. So I don't have all the answers, my friends, and I'm not an expert. So I hope this video helps you along your journey. I may have missed a few steps or a few things, but like I said, I'm not perfect. So I hope this helps. And the key to awaken is this, guys. This is the key. If I could leave anything with, you know, this, I know this is a long video. But if I could leave anything with you is become the master of your world. Get out of autopilot and be, start making conscious decisions and becoming the master of your world. Start self-mastery. Before, I was just learning knowledge and attaining, you know, ga gathering spiritual knowledge and wisdom. But I wasn't practicing the self-mastery part of it. And then my life really changed overnight and miraculous things happened when I started self-mastery and making conscious decisions. Also start to educate yourselves. I'm not all knowing. So seek out other videos, seek out other books, start filling your, your, your bank of information within yourself and so that you can formulate your own opinion or knowledge. But with everything, use your discernment. You know, my discernment guides me through everything, guys. So with that, I want to say God bless you. And if you like this video, like and subscribe. And right now I'm being highly censored. So please, 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 can you share this video if you find this informative? Thank you, guys. God bless.